So I'm Jabo, Jabo Butera, and I'm among the founders of uh, the Jabolani Coffee. Most people don't do mornings, they do coffee. So do I. Coffee with friends, coffee with family, coffee in the morning, coffee with a view, coffee on the commute. It's more than a drink, it is a way of life, a routine, a connection. It is part of our everyday. Coffee is more than a commodity, it has evolved into a culture and is a way we socialise and connect with the world. It's accessible, you boil the kettle, stir the spoon, add milk if you like, and voila, an instant feeling of satisfaction and a brief moment of joy. It has become so consumable on a global scale, yet there are some who rely on coffee in a way we have not truly come to appreciate. For some, coffee is a lifeline, a livelihood, a necessity, an opportunity to feed their families. And it's these people, and their stories, we owe thanks and gratitude to more than two billion times every single day. Brands today have a real responsibility and duty of care to be honest with everything from ingredients to processes to passions and to why, why they exist. We met Jabo and the Jabalani story through the Diversity Business Incubator and just fell in love with everything that he was saying and genuinely couldn't believe why it wasn't being shouted from the rooftops. So we went to Rwanda. We experienced everything that he was saying. We felt everything that he believed in and just used that to fuel the development of the Jabalani coffee brand because the spirit and the authenticity that we could now put into that brand just made it feel so special. And really the most powerful thing behind any brand is its story. The genesis of it and how we started is from a conversation with the heart of helping. When um, uh, a friend of mine uh, reached out asking for a contribution um, for when you live abroad, when you're on a diaspora, um, always people calling saying, can you help? And there's this little girl, um, she was going through um, treatment for cancer and they were calling out to help financially. But where she comes from, she comes from this uh, um, mountain area called Gachenghe uh, in Rwanda. And through that journey of uh, helping her, we discovered that, that uh, hill, that place, they do uh, produce amazing coffee. And most of those who are producing the coffee are women, mothers. So the mother of this child could not help much but she could not also either do the work. And that's the conversation when it started, from the heart of helping. From there, we discovered um, this coffee and started thinking, how can we make it sustainable instead of continuing sending money uh, on and on? That's not sustainable. What can we do which is going to be generating income enough, but also generating work, jobs, skills, um, passion, publicity and knowing more and more so that it's not only we're helping one child but we're helping all the children on the rural area, that place called Gakenyi.
the harsh reality of the Rwanda that we see today is that it has survived something that was really atrocious 28 years ago, and that is the genocide. And statistics show that even now, three out of 10 children die at the age of five. And that's have to be changed. And if we can contribute into that, that will be really good. Talking about the genocide, I, I feel like I have to share a little bit of my story. My sister lived in Kigali and uh, she passed. They killed her in the genocide, herself and her husband, which is my brother-in-law. And they killed her so atrociously that they made their children witness what was going on. And it was hard. So those, I think the older one was seven, the middle was five, and the little one was around three. And they saw these people killing mom and dad in a way that no one, and I would not wish for anyone to leave that. And they left them. They said, we're not gonna kill you. We're gonna let this story kill you. We're gonna let these memories finish you. So really what they have in mind was that because these children have witnessed the most atrocious thing, they will never survive. And the good news is they did. Why I'm saying this story is because the young boy who was three nearly maybe four, when mom and dad was killed, he got married like two weeks ago. The most handsome, amazing young man who's contributing tremendously to the development of Rwanda. He has created a platform that they're using right now in schools when the, 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 the COVID happened, how to remotely learn from not being in class, but accessing all that thing. He has a dream that always makes me feel like, not proud, but I feel like if these people who have done this thing can come back and see what happened. If the world around us can go back to Rwanda and hear these real stories that people survived, but not only survived, they lived and now they're striving. It's the same as the nature. Water in Rwanda was polluted with bodies and, 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 and I think even mountains everywhere, bodies were everywhere. But the nature survived. And now we have coffee that comes from those mountains. The water is being cleansed after all these years. And this is what Rwanda is trying to do. The Rwanda is trying to survive. And is trying to survive not by one individual. There is a spirit of togetherness that is happening. And what struck me the most is that this cooperative that has been built to be together, for women being together, so that they can find strength by being together it makes me so hopeful that the country has moved on, not only moved on, but has survived one of those dark days. The Rwanda you see today is the courage that comes from those who survived and those who came and believe that Rwanda can strive and become the country it is today. We're so blessed to be part of the story.
The story of the Jablani coffee come really from those mountains of Rwanda and come really from the cooperative that these women have managed to put together so that they can work together to better their families, to better their children, to be able to, to, to strive and to, to get economically better in the future. So where we come as Jabulani is when we source our coffee, we support those women. 10% uh, of our profit goes to them and, uh, and directly to them. And we, we really, really take that from our heart because we know that if these women are well supported, if their needs are well met, uh, we will keep having the best coffee. Not only that, we will make sure that humanity is extending and that these women have uh, a better life and a better and 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 you know when you work hard and you have something extra given to you or something extra supporting what you do it makes you motivated it makes you wake up in the morning and feel like uh, it's the best day and you're going to do it not only for your family but for your children and uh, there is a say that i love which is when you educate a woman, you educate a nation. And I know when you help a woman, you help a nation. Because from her family will become those children who will grow and impact their surrounding, their communities, and maybe their country. It's a, a cooperative of women who put their passion every day when they go on that field. So they don't just grow the berries for the sake of growing berries. You feel their passion through that. You feel their their emotion translated into this um, plantation, this way they're growing the coffee, or when they are um, working on the coffee, because it requires quite a lot of uh, work from washing it to drying it and caring for it. But that passion is uh, translated through there. So they go an extra mile and make sure the coffee is organic. <laughs> Jabo a couple of years ago um, and were introduced to the Diversity Business Incubator and as an organisation that really appealed to us there was a lot of local impact that the Diversity Business Incubator are having so from our point of view when we started talking coffee to Jabo and we saw how passionate he was about Rwanda we didn't have a Rwandan coffee at the time we didn't source any beans from Rwanda at the time and that really appealed to us. Now there was an opportunity for us to also buy into the fact that this could support all of the important work that the DBI is doing. So in Plymouth, um, from our point of view, the fact that they support a very diverse audience and they, they support um, an audience that's actually in the area where they're working, it's known to be um, a more deprived area of Plymouth. Um, so the idea that we could support farmers in Rwanda as well as local um, projects 
Um, so the Jabalani Food Court, for example, um, is somewhere which is at the heart of that community. It brings that community together. Coffee's at the centre of it. It's, it's just it's fantastic and it really works for us. Effectively, it's like going from the motherland to the homeland. So we're kind of looking at this local story here, but also understanding um, who the people are behind the coffee. That's, that's where it started, really. It starts over a cup of coffee, as, as lots of things do for us at Owens. But it's ended up being really big and really important and a really important part of what we do as a business. So when we started the roastery in 2010, there weren't very many roasteries in Devon at all. And there certainly weren't very many that were owned and run by a female. Uh, that has changed now, um, but at the time it wasn't, wasn't the norm. It was very sort of male dominated. Because of that, the link back to origin and actually empowering women at origin is really important to us. Mostly the women in coffee production tend to be the labourers, so they're not necessarily the decision makers or the landowners, um, but what is so important is that if you empower the, the women, then they tend to make decisions that actually affect the community. So they'll be putting more money back into nutrition, into the communities, um, and so it is very important to bring them into the story. What we decided as a business was that we needed to consider that impact, you know, consider the impact that coffee has on the world, not just on the coffee growing countries, but across the world. So we decided that as part of that, we would become, always stick to being 100% organic and 100% fair trade. We decided that in order to do that as a small business, we needed the support of bigger organisations like the Soil Association and the Fair Trade Organisation. So our, all of our coffees are certified by those organisations, which means that there is full traceability from bean to cup. The Jevalani coffee brand really does go beyond the bean. It supports families and communities within the Gachenya region but more importantly, it supports and secures the future of farming and agriculture within Rwanda. I think we take for granted when we put the kettle on just how much goes into creating that cup and having been there and experiencing and seeing firsthand the long commutes and the hardships of having to leave your children at home and what that actually means when we purchase a, a coffee with a purpose. And we know that each purchase actually enables us to support social impact projects that are really, really important for the growth and for those people. Things like educational centres and IT suites to enable have children have that important education. And the nurseries that allow mothers to feel safe and secure while they're at work, knowing that their children are happy and, and being educated. That's why it's very important for this nursery to be built, for these uh, facilities, uh, IT skills, uh, facilities to be built so that children can have a safe place to be with their mom and mom can have that stillness and quietness and knowing that the children are safe. And I think their work will be better. I think they will produce more. I think their morale will go up and I think the plantation and their cooperative will strive for the better. And that's my wish and hope, is that this cooperative really strive and become something that will be a model for other cooperatives around the country. When customers buy our coffee, they know they're getting more than just a great cup. They're buying into people and supporting local communities worldwide. When we met Jabo, we had an instant connection. We believed that the Jabalani project aligned with our values and would resonate with our customers. Today, people are more conscious about what they're buying than ever before. Customers care about the products that they buy, how they buy it, and brands really have to 
navigate that transitional change and behave in a different way, talk to customers in a different way, in a more authentic way. Because consumers are really having to focus on what goes into the products, what goes into making the products, the impact behind purchasing that product, the importance of that on a bigger scale. Um, not just taking for granted that you could go to a cupboard, pick a coffee, put it in your mug and have a, a nice hot drink. It's actually the processes of people going out and choosing that particular product over another it means so much more than it ever did, really did before. We're making their lives a little bit better and we contribute this way to where the coffee comes from and where the the real story of Rwanda comes from. The building the Jabalani brand really means something. It goes beyond the bean. It really empowers people. We can see firsthand from in Rwanda how much it really affects the livelihoods of many, many people, from children to families, communities from all over the, the mountain region. And we kind of take that for granted and I think brands really, we have a responsibility to be able to share that journey to help people make that purchasing decision, to really understand that that choice of you buying a Jabalani coffee over a different brand perhaps really does make that much of a difference. There is a lot of things that we know that we lost through COVID and there is a lot of things that we know we learn through COVID which is the, 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 the power of humanity and the power of people being together and being able to work together. And now that we have had our lives kind of back, we want to keep that going. We wanna keep that spirit of togetherness going. We wanna make sure that the people who are working in this cooperative are safe and have things that they need to be able to operate in their daily basis. And, and really not think about the loss that occur when COVID happened, but thinking about what the future is for them. And I, I'm so glad that Jablani is part of that future and part of that change that is gonna keep coming and gonna keep growing. For us at Jablani, uh, for myself, it has been a wonderful journey because I'm excited of what we're doing as a social impact on both worlds. One, on the farm with uh, uh, the, the, the farmers and the children on the, on the street we are helping, the health side we are looking into, all that is that social impact on Miranda. Then there is a social impact here in the England where we live. I come from Rwanda, I live in England. So my culture transferred here. This is where I live. But so when people see me, they say, where are you from? I just give them my coffee. This is where I'm from. So when they test it, they test my culture. They test my Rwanda. They test who I am. That's the passion we have.
It wasn't true. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> it's as if I was waiting for that thing to go. Wee! 